Hey everybody, this is Jim. I'm a writer, educator, and podcaster. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I want to talk about season two of the Korean Netflix series Squid Game. I know what you might be thinking, what season two? But season two has been confirmed. In November of 2021, director, creator, and writer of the series Hwang Dong-kyuk uh, stated to AP Entertainment that due to the huge success of the show and the huge demand for season two, he has no choice but to give the people what they want. And if that's not enough, in January of 2022, Netflix CEO Ted Sarandos stated, absolutely the Squid Game universe has just begun. So get ready for a season two. But before we talk about what might be in season two, let me just first talk about the show in general for anybody who has been living under a rock, just so we have a place to start. So the show is a Netflix original series uh, from South Korea by creator, writer, director Hwang Dong-kyo. This is Netflix's most watched show ever with almost 2 billion watched hours. What makes this show so good? Uh, well, first off, um, you know, it's incredible that uh, this is um, such a one-person show in terms of the writing, but um, hats off to Hwang Dong-hyuk because uh, the writing is a big piece of why this is so popular. So there's this unraveling mystery that's happening before our eyes. Uh, as we enter the game, we have no idea exactly what the consequences are initially. And so the mystery unfolds over time. Uh, we don't know how the game works initially. And even when we do, we don't know who's going to win or um, what it exactly it's going to be like when that person wins, how many people can win, and so on. So it's a really cool idea. And it's something I think also that's very relatable. Not only are the characters brilliant and round, um, and some are heroic and some are greedy, but they're all have you know, pros and cons and um, great stories to them. The situation as well is very relatable unless you're part of the 1%, right? Um, it's people fighting to stay in the game, the game of life. And it's interesting that in the capitalist society in which they come from, they have uh, failed. And so the game is supposed to be a representation of a more equitable world, one that's more fair. At least that's according to uh, the game makers and so on. As in real life, the chance plays a role. And um, uh, in the end, the person who wins is the person who wants it the most, or at least that's how it seems. But uh, it isn't the case because as we find out in the end, spoiler alert, it's actually sacrifice and playing for more than just monetary reward that ultimately wins out. I think a big part of it too is how relatable uh, the circumstances are, um, fighting difficult economic circumstances, um, wanting to have an opportunity to make more money, and imagining yourself playing the game. I know I'm not the only one who imagined what he would do in certain circumstances, how you would choose the different things that they allowed you to choose, and how you would play the game, what strategy you would impose. Uh, what tactics you would impose. So what can we expect for season two? Uh, well, everybody dies pretty much in season one. So there's going to be a new cast, uh, new characters, plenty of new stories. Um, yes, I do expect some characters to come back, but a lot of them are dead. And so them coming back would be rather difficult. Uh, people would have had to fake their own deaths or um, have not really died. And I do think that that's possible for at least one character that I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, I think that it would be pretty hard to bring back uh, some of the other characters we saw finally die. So Huang Jun-ho, the uh, cop who went undercover to get into the game, he might still be alive because we didn't exactly see him die. We saw his brother, frontman uh, Huang In-ho, shoot him in the shoulder which you can survive i believe and then fall into some body of water but we didn't actually see him drown and it is possible that his brother 
allowed him to survive. After all, the brother did not want to kill him initially, right? So the last episode of the series of season one is the most revelatory in terms of what we're likely to see in a season two. Ki-hoon sees the man in the suit who offered him money if he could win one round of Dakji, which is a Korean card flipping game. Ki-hoon sees uh, the suit man playing this game with somebody else trying to get them into the squid game and intervenes. This is interesting because this could be more of what Ki-hoon does in season two. We also see him make this decision, right? He has this very important decision to make. He can either board the plane to see his, his daughter again, or he can come back and now that he knows about the game and the creators, he can fight uh, his former oppressors and try to get some sort of revenge or justice. Clearly, this is going to be a part of season two. The question is, will Ki-hoon still be the same afterward? This might be a thing that ends up destroying Ki-hoon from the inside. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So let's start with some quotes from the director, creator, and writer, Huang Dong-hyuk. And let's see if we can piece together more details about what to expect for season two. In September of 2021, he told Variety magazine, I don't have well-developed plans for Squid Game 2. It is quite tiring just thinking about it. But if I were to do it, I would certainly not do it alone. I'd consider using a writer's room and would want multiple experienced writers. First off, if you don't know, it took uh, director Huang Dong Kyok uh, many years to um, basically get the green light and, and to produce and make this uh, series. Um, he's It's been in his head for a long time. Uh, season two, it'll be a different process. How might this change what we see in season two? Because there are a lot more people involved, um, we might have a different flavor, a different feel to the show. It, it, it might not feel exactly like season one in terms of the world in which we are living in or um, all of the themes and, and tone might be a little bit different to reflect all of the different writers who are engaged in this process. So that means new stories, new sub stories or subplots, different themes, and so on. A little bit later, around October of 2021, uh, director Huang Dong Kyuk told the times in reference to frontman if i do get to do one meaning a second season of squid game one meaning uh one of the stories he would look at would be the story of frontman i think the issue with police officers is not just an issue in korea um he doesn't specify what problem exactly with uh police officers but i mean you know if you've been paying attention and you live in the u.s um you know that there is one this was an issue that I wanted to raise. Maybe in season two, I can talk about this more. Interesting. So um, the issue with police, um, uh, I guess in this case, being involved in uh, crime, abusing power and so on, uh, is something that we might see in season two. I don't think this is going to be, uh, and I could be wrong, I don't think this is gonna be a major thing for season two. I think this might be like just, um, one of the other stories that's told. I don't think, for example, um, season one being primarily about um, rich, uh, greedy, heartless, uh, capitalist, you know, rich people. I don't think this season, season two, is going to be about um, corrupt um, law enforcement and government officials. Um, that would be too much of a change I see it as a little bit more tangential, but obviously important to the director. Moving the timeline now to the all important date of November, 2021. Here he told AP Entertainment that he is in the planning process. It's all in his head. Uh, it's too early to say how or when uh, season two will come out, but he did say something interesting about ki -hoon. Well, ki will come back. He'll do something for the world. Mm. 
Given will come back, he will do something for the world. Uh, really interesting commentary. This again reiterates the idea that Gihun is on a mission. You can call it a revenge mission. Um, he's clearly um, emotional about this. This could be pretty bad. Um, I did find the last episode interesting in that despite the hope that Gihun had uh, in the bet he made with Ilnam at the end about um, whether or not someone would help out this homeless person in the street they were watching from a window. Despite the hopeful view that Gihun holds, there is a moment where he sort of snaps and the bet really is that Gihun gets to murder Ilnam if he's wrong. And uh, it signals that just like the story begins, um, Gihun might not be exactly the hero that everybody uh, wants. And so I think it's going to be uh, a test. Speaking in April of 2022 to Deadline Magazine at their annual Contenders Television at Paramount Studios, Wang dong hyuk does state that two uh, characters will come back. He mentions Gihun and Frontman. So this means we will get Frontman's uh, story, more of his story. Uh, I do find him interesting. We do have these two characters, uh, both won the game, and um, they seem to represent two different sides. A person who strongly believes in the game, and a person who is violently opposed to the game. And in that way, they're sort of like poles, and so it's appropriate that they both survive, and they get to sort of fight it out, sort of like um, uh, Obi-Wan or Luke against uh, Darth Vader. But What's interesting about Darth Vader is Darth Vader starts as a Jedi. And um, while I can't say where the writing is going to go, obviously, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Gihun ends up becoming one of the bad guys um, because he's so consumed with rage and emotion and vengeance that he ends up, in a way, doing the same thing that made him a victim of the game in the first place, which is to be cruel and heartless and um, so on. When it comes to Huang In-ho, frontman, there is a possibility for redemption here. So what I see is In-ho has the possibility for a redemption because if it turns out he did let his brother survive, then again, it just shows that there's hope for him still. Whereas for ki I see the possibility to fall into a dark abyss where he becomes a bad guy. Uh, so it's going to be a story of two sides that are not exactly opposite. They may have opposite views about the game, but they are more alike than I think they would like to admit to. As I stated, I think that it's going to be a story about Gihun and Inho. Um, they're going to represent two sides that I think are going to increasingly come together. There might be, and I'm totally speculating, um, a moment, a critical um, climactic point where they have to choose. They have to choose what side they're on. Are they on the side of the game and on uh, the system as it is, or are they on the side of humanity and something else, something empathetic. We could see them turning sides. Uh, that's definitely possible. Um, but I think with all of the writers, nothing that I can think or say is going to be what ends up happening. So I'm very excited for uh, season two. So when can we expect a season two of Squid Game? Uh, well, given that uh, director, creator, and writer Huang Dong Hyuk stated in November 2021 that he was in the planning phase, it was all in his head, that it was too uncertain to say when or how, it's going to take a little bit of time. I think it's safe to assume something like uh, two years from that point. That would be November of 2023. That's quite a ways away and I think, you know, it's just a safe bet considering um, all the new characters and stories. But there is going to be a lot of demand, so definitely not uh, an insider. I don't know how long it's going to take. But uh, that is a conservative estimate. Keep in mind also that it took Huang Dong Hyuk many years to realize this story. So even if it took that long, that would still be incredibly quick. Um, now, how do I feel about all of these things? 
you know, should there be uh, a season two? Like I said, everybody dies, and to me, it felt very much like a a one and done type of story, or at least I feel like it was meant to be because everybody dies. Because, you know, at the end, Gi Hoon sort of reveals what's wrong with the game. So,、um, if there's going to be a season two, it really needs to be. Something else.、Uh, we already know that the game is terrible. We already know that there's greed and corruption. Perhaps it will be about exposing the game, you know, exposing the corruption and the evil doing, and whether Gi Hoon succeeds in that. That could be、um, interesting. And so, what you'll end up having is sort of a cat and mouse type of thing, kind of like a spy thriller, you know, as Gi Hoon attempts to uncover. What is happening and reveal it to the world. What's interesting is that、um, you might think that the other side has all of the power, but because Gi Hoon knows what's going on, he actually has a lot of power in this situation. It'll be interesting to see、um, how he's able to leverage that and the cat and mouse game that will be played. I think many people will be wanting this evil empire to collapse, but one thing I will say about that is in the first season. Where the vote is split, but eventually the participants decide on leaving the game. When they leave the game and go back into the real world, their lives end up getting worse, and so they end up back in the game. And I think that tells us something about the writer's worldview, and that's that the current system is broken, and、um, the real world might not change or help them. And so, what might be needed is a collapse of the system itself. And、um, maybe a, a restart. So we might see something like that. These are all ideas.、Um, I'm a writer, and、uh, I like to think about stories in this way. What could happen? What's likely to happen? What's interesting if it were to happen? I hope you enjoyed these ideas and speculating with me.、Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed season one. When season two comes out, I look forward to. Doing a little bit of a reaction or review of each episode and breaking it down, analyzing some things and making some predictions. So that's what I'm here for. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe.、Uh, it helps me out. I truly appreciate it.、Um, I can use the help because I am trying to grow this channel, and I just want you to have a great rest of your day.